It was once thought that Neanderthaloids evolved from the East Asian strains of Java Man and Peking Man and spread along the foothills of the Eurasian mountains into Europe during a lush interglacial period. This interglacial is now referred to as Marine Isotope Stage 11, an interglacial period that lasted 424,000 years and ended 374,000 years ago. It was during these relatively short interglacial periods that early humans seemed to thrive and expand into new regions. This interglacial provides one of the richest records of human occupation in Eurasia and likely achieved temperatures slightly higher than today, with a slight rise in sea level, perhaps 10 metres or 30 feet. However, extreme environmental changes shook Africa and Southwest Asia 400,000 years ago. Fresh water evaporated on a regular basis and vast grasslands vanished, taking with them the large grazing animals hunted by early humans. Researchers discovered that after hundreds of thousands of years of stability, dramatic shifts occurred around 400,000 years ago. Extreme swings between wet and dry periods occurred, lakes shrank, and new types of vegetation replaced large grasslands on a regular basis, but ecological instability did not drive people out of the region or extinguish them. Instead, it prompted them to make significant changes in their behavior and culture. Early humans refined stone tools and weapons, expanded trade networks, and even demonstrated the development of symbolic communication. Another interglacial period between 524,000 and 474,000 years ago was known as Marine Isotope Stage 13. This epoch is also significant, according to scientists, because it is when anatomically modern humans and Neanderthals first evolved. According to current evidence from both fossils and DNA, the Neanderthal and modern human lineages split at least 500,000 years ago. Like modern humans, Neanderthals probably descended from a very small population with an effective population, the number of individuals who can bear or father children, of approximately 3,000 to 12,000. Since the very first stages of the anthropological study of Neanderthals in the 19th century, opinions have been divided concerning Neanderthal phylogenetic status and their relation to modern humans. Neanderthal cranium, rather than constituting an isolated phenomenon, was the extreme term of a series leading gradually from it to the best developed of human crania. Others argued that the Neanderthal features suggested a race so morphologically distant from all existing human varieties as to merit the rank of a distinct species. One hundred years later, the taxonomic position of the Neanderthal is still undecided. Indeed, Neanderthal's relations to other contemporaneous Mousterian humans, as well as to various upper Paleolithic populations, remain to be elucidated. The number of specimens relevant for a Neanderthal evaluation has diminished considerably throughout the years as a result of a continuous process of de-Neanderthalization. This term refers to the process through which human fossils originally labelled as Neanderthals were subsequently re-evaluated and defined otherwise. For example, the Kafsi remains, originally considered as Neanderthaloids, were eventually recognised as Homo sapiens, this view was later corroborated by the chronological evidence which suggested a much earlier date for these specimens, clearly implying the improbability of any affinity with the classic European Neanderthals. As a result of this de-Neanderthalization process, only a few ancient fossils from Southwest Asia are still regarded as genuine Southwest Asian Neanderthals. This is important for reasons we will discuss later in the video. Meanwhile, the Zutia fossil human specimen was discovered in 1925 in the Cave of the Robbers, near the Sea of Galilee in southwest Asia. It consists of a nearly complete frontal right zygomatic and a partial right sphenoid bone and has been dated to the Middle Pleistocene period through correlation with the Taban archaeological sequence. This sequence is central to understanding the chronology of southwestern Asia and is frequently used as a reference for interpreting archaeological cultures at other Pleistocene sites. Radiometric dates and the archaeological context bracket the associated cave layers to between 300,000 and 500,000 years ago, making it one of the earliest cranial fossils discovered in Southwest Asia thus far. This dating is important because if it is recognized as an archaic Homo sapiens, such as the Jebel Irhud skull, 
that would throw a monkey wrench in human origins in Africa. The geographic position of the Zutia fossil at the corridor between Africa and Eurasia, in combination with its middle Pleistocene age, makes it an interesting specimen for understanding aspects of later human evolution, including morphological variability in human evolution and migration routes between Africa and Eurasia. Nonetheless, since its discovery, the taxonomic and phylogenetic interpretation of the Zutier fossil has been contentious and influenced by revised and improved dating of the Eurasian fossil hominin record and individual and historic perspectives concerning the tempo and mode of later human evolution. At the time of its discovery, both the archaeological context of the fossil and the geological antiquity of the site were unclear. Many of the earlier studies incorporating the Zutier fossil identified morphological similarities to Neanderthals, but the definition of Neanderthal varies among researchers. Since discovery of the Zutier skull, traditional morphometric methods have variously suggested affinities to Asian Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, and early Homo sapiens. The Zutier cranian fragment was discovered at the base of the archaeological sequence, under a layer that contained Aculean stone tools, a pre-Musterian technology. If modern humans evolved in Africa, the oldest known bones that could possibly belong to our species were discovered in a Moroccan cave called Jebel Irhud and date back 330,000 years. With so few fossils, reconstructing the story of human evolution and migration is comparable to attempting to complete a jigsaw puzzle with many missing pieces scientists frequently need to trace our ancestors' movements using the stone tools we created. The first hominins to leave Africa, whoever they were, carried oval and pear-shaped hand axes for pounding and scraping food, a technique known as aculean. The oldest tools, which are more than a million years old, were made in this manner, but in a group of tools discovered in a rock layer from India dating from 385,000 to 172,000 years ago, plus or minus around 50,000 years on either end, the massive hand axes give place to smaller, more complex points. In fact, one of the tips looks to have a groove that would allow it to be attached to some type of projectile, such as a spear. This type of technology has long been associated with Neanderthals and Homo sapiens in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, but it was not supposed to have reached India until humans arrived in South Asia around 100,000 years ago. This technique, known as Les Valois, is associated with substantial improvements in human intellect, as such instruments cannot be created without the ability to think abstractly and plan ahead. The Zutia facial fragment, originally considered as proto-Neanderthal, is currently regarded by some investigators as pre-Sapiens, partly because of its pre-Musterian archaeological context, but chiefly because it is devoid of the typical Neanderthal facial morphology. To better determine the taxonomic affinities of the Zutia fossil, a new study uses 3D semi-landmark geometric morphometric techniques and multivariate statistical analyses to quantify the frontal and zygomatic region and compare it with other middle to late Pleistocene African and Eurasian hominin fossils. Remarkably, the research concluded that Zutia exhibits a generalized frontal and zygomatic morphology, possibly indicative of the population that gave rise to modern humans and Neanderthals. Nevertheless, given that it most likely postdates the split between these two lineages, Zutia might also be an early representative of the Neanderthal lineage. In fact, Neanderthals largely retained this generalized overall morphology, whereas recent modern humans depart from this more primitive ancestral morphology. One study concluded that Neanderthals fall into at least two basic ethnic groups that coincided with their north-south geographical distribution. Southern Neanderthals, from the Iberian Peninsula, the Balkans, the Middle East and Italy, had broader and shorter faces than northern Neanderthals from populations living north of the Pyrenees, the Alps, and Central and Eastern Europe. However, once it became apparent that the Zutier fossil was actually older than many of the Eurasian fossil hominins discovered, its interpretation as a Neanderthal ancestor became less common. Some anthropologists saw it as transitional between Homo erectus and the early modern humans, with no special relationship to Neanderthals, while others interpreted it as a generalized ancestor of all Neanderthals. 
Nonetheless, the frontal and zygomatic morphology of Zutia is most similar to Shanidar V, a Neanderthal and School V, an early Homo sapiens. Although we shall not discuss here in detail the human remains from Shanidar Cave, some comments are relevant. Most researchers believe the presence of certain Neanderthal features in the Shanidar remains unquestionably aligns them with other Neanderthals, but the Shanidar sample does not display all the characters commonly or exclusively found in European Neanderthal crania. According to one study, the Neanderthal fossils from Shanidar cave are only partially Neanderthal, whereas some Shanidar fossils may have developed from a local hominid population of uncertain origin, which manifests more generalized characteristics. Or in other words, a more Zutia-like morphology. More recently, a cladistic analysis placed Zutia as a sister group to the school homins and these specimens as a sister group to modern humans, and concluded that it is the oldest known Homo sapiens. Other research concluded that Zutia neither expressed uniquely Neanderthal nor modern human features, but instead retained many features similar to those of East Asian hominins, such as Peking man and Java man. The research argued that Zutia provided a link between East and West Asian hominins, invalidating a unique African origin of modern humans around 300,000 years ago or earlier. In fact, a treasure trove of ancient stone tools suggests that humans' circuitous path to modernity wound through India. The understanding of human evolution in South Asia primarily rests on a solitary calvarium from the Narmada Valley of central India, but its disputed taxonomic status has blurred the picture. The robust hominin is sometimes recognized as a hybrid or an archaic Homo sapiens or even an advanced Homo erectus represented by the calvarium and two femora. It appeared around 300,000 years old in association with megaterrestrial fauna and later Culean tools kit. The discovery provides the first scientifically recorded evidence of human skeletal remains from the Indian subcontinent dating to the late Middle Pleistocene of 300,000 years ago. The great robustness or thickness of the cranial vault first indicated it was a Homo erectus, which was further attested by a landmark morphometric study. The study concluded that the calvarium belonged to an evolved Homo erectus. The second study assigned the calvarium to archaic Homo sapiens, presenting a great mosaic of Homo erectus, Homo sapiens and unique features. The fossil could be of a female individual aged between 25 and 30 years, which is important because females have a smaller average brain case size, about 10% less than males. But its considerable affinities with the classical Neanderthals are more a surprise and difficult to explain, except through hybridization. There is a possibility of hybridization due to Narmada Valley's mid-intercontinental place in the Old World as a possible crossroad or corridor of early hominin migrations. This is very likely why the Calvarium possesses a mosaic of characteristics. Its unique features may be explained as a result of considerable local evolution after hybridization, as happened among the Neanderthal group of hominins in Europe. The discovery proved the presence of early humans in the Indian subcontinent, and filled a void in our knowledge about human evolution. The discovery opened a new chapter in terms of hard evidence of evolution in South Asia. Unlike Africa, where stone tools were found along with human skeletons, all over India, archaeologists were finding prehistoric stone tools, but there was no fossil evidence. Initially, Namada Man was assigned to the hominid Taxon Homo erectus namadensis. Its antiquity is based upon the direct association of the Calvaria with stone tools, mainly hand axes and cleavers, typical of the prehistoric Aculean technological tradition that was dominant in Middle Pleistocene times in India. The fossilized animal remains in the deposit, including cattle, buffalo, elephant, include some species that are now extinct, but they are reliable index fossils of the late Middle Pleistocene. Radiometric dating methods are not feasible, so the age of the specimen is a relative dating estimate based upon its lithic and faunal associations. However, some physical features of the Calvaria were not typically those found in Homo erectus fossils from Southeast Asia, China and Africa. For example, the cranial capacity of these early and middle Pleistocene specimens averages 1,000 cubic centimetres, 
but estimates for the Namada cranial vault fell between 1,155 and 1,421 cubic centimetres, values within the range of anatomically archaic Homo sapiens. The specimen was compared with crania of other hominid fossils of the Middle Pleistocene, with which it exhibited a significant number of anatomical similarities. The archaeological data do not rule out the possibility that Asian Homo erectus had inhabited the Indian subcontinent, but fossil remains of this species have not been recovered. Surely, one fossil can never tell the full story. The importance of the Namada Calvaria is that it demonstrates that the Aculean tool tradition was practiced by early humans in a part of the world that lies between the richer hominid fossil sites in Africa and in Southeast Asia and the Far East. In a report published in Nature, researchers revealed hundreds of stone implements discovered at an archaeological site in southern India. According to the researchers, the tools date back around a million years and show how large, blunt hand axes evolved into beautifully shaped stone points. It also suggests that a complex tool-making society began to form in India some 385,000 years ago, long before modern humans arrived. No remains were discovered beside the Indian artifacts, making it impossible to verify whether they were made by early Homo sapiens or one of our hominin cousins. If they were created by members of our species, it would substantially alter the course of human evolution. At the very least, the discovery indicates complex interactions between the mystery hominins of India and their relatives around the world. It demonstrates that simple linear narratives of human dispersal that only cover specific time periods are wrong. So, why don't we have more fossils from India and Southwest Asia? In some regions, the presence of fossils depends on preservation conditions such as soil chemistry and erosion rates. In other regions, either enough systematic survey has not been done or potential hominid fossil material has been overlooked. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.